Hello, I've acquired a laser with legs. We gotta put some wood under it. And if you're suspecting I was given this Ortor Laser Master 3 by Ortor from Ortor, then you're correct. But it's not the only thing I got. And an enclosure! This will keep the light fumes and fire contained. It has a tinted window up top, but the blue light is still visible. I can see it. Which is why we need eye protection. These are the glasses it came with. Laser goggles have a specific wavelength and optical density. But these ones are nowhere to be found. This impact rating is all I could find. They do appear to block blue light, but I don't know what kind or how much. Lasers are inherently dangerous and this is important information. My eyes are some of my favorite organs. No problem because I already purchased my own pair of goggles. There's the wavelength and optical density. What you want to look for is a graph like this. Down here is the color spectrum, and this is our specific range of blue light. Follow that up to see that it is protected. Over here we can see how strong the filter is. It has an optical density of 7. That's great because we're above the minimum of 5. When you put them on, blue light is invisible. Practically. But what are we going to cut? I found these beautiful wood veneers on Amazon. I also got plywood, cherry, walnut, and lacewood. Look how thin that veneer is. Okay, let's see what this thing can do. It worked. I cut out the shapes and engraved some of the inner lines. The wood glue is causing the veneer to curl up, so I gotta clamp it down. I was running out of coasters, so I cut my own. This time I'm gonna try super glue, the gel type, so it doesn't harden immediately. This is some orange oil to bring out the natural color in the wood. Nice. But we can do better. How about a phone case? This one already has a wood veneer that we can inlay into. There's about a millimeter to work with. Turns out, the wood was paper thin and there's actually canvas and glue underneath, which was beginning to melt. Not good. Rubber and glue can create dangerous fumes. Hmm. What if instead of inlaying, we overlaid?
This one's a success. Let's try a new material. Leather. Make sure to use real leather that's vegetable tanned and not fake leather because it creates toxic fumes. This masking tape will prevent burn marks. The blue line will cut and the black will set to fill to engrave. This is my aneurognathus from that video. I got some leather dye, but they're very dark, so I diluted them in alcohol. Now he can be on everybody's hat. I went ahead and made some keychains, but look at those harsh cut edges. They won't be there for long. Gone. Nice. While engraving, the laser got disconnected and burnt this nice little viewing hole for me. It's disconnected a couple times. It could be because I'm using a USB adapter. There is a wireless option, but I haven't tried it yet. Anyways, what else can we make? This is 1 16th walnut. I wanted to make some things to give away to patrons and subscribers, which is why I made so many. Now I can give each of my patrons something. I'll give some away in the comments too. I wonder what else we could make with a laser. This is a rotary roller. And it's why we need those legs. It rotates the object while it's being lasered. Oops, the logo's backwards, we'll do that again. And it disconnected. Well, we get what we get. It's not gonna be perfect. Actually, wait, you know what? There you go. One thing I really wanted to do was make a light up sign. But then I learned blue light will go right through the clear acrylic, doing it no harm. So I'm gonna have to try an unconventional technique. I'm gonna use this metal to transfer the heat onto the acrylic. And it worked. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. It's going into the success category along with the backwards logo. On the next installment, Stegaros. I've been working on this one nonstop. It's coming, it's coming. See you later. <laughs>